Yeah, the back end's quite aggressive, isn't it? What's, what is quite impressive with the lights on this, you'd be forgiven for thinking they're entirely new lights from an 812 Superfast, but because they put this sort of eyebrow over them with the line of the boot, it sort of created this, this perceived different shape around them. I can't make up my mind about the application of the, what I call them, canards on the rear boot lid. On photos, it looks like they're part of the sculpture of the car, but in actual fact, they're, they're stuck on. It's a little bit Mansori, isn't it? But from afar, they look really good. So I can't, I can't quite make up. Totally defined by the engine and transmission, this car. And it revs to nine and a half. And it's a naturally aspirated Ferrari V12, which is a slice of the automotive holy grail. Through a twin clutch box, and Ferrari do twin clutch boxes, and more specifically, the marriage and relationship between the engine and gearbox, unbelievable. So that, for me, is the defining thing of, the, of this car, that it revs to nine and a half. Some angles, I'm like, it looks really good. Other angles, I'm like, looks a bit too aftermarket. It's funny, I don't think it quite has the elegance and sophistication of the TDF. But it also has incredible presence, and it's like quite a muscular interpretation of the 812. Look how it moulds out of the wing as a single piece, and then continues as this massive ducktail flick around the rear. And these as well, so this actually bleeds aero out. So that's probably pressure bleed for the rear arches, because at like 200 miles an hour, there's quite a lot of lift generated from the arch, so they need to bleed out air. Spec's cool, love the purple, it's brilliant, isn't it? Super cool. All right, dude, how are you doing, man? How's things, good? Yeah, how's everything? Boom, man, it's great edit. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, man, it's it. good. Nice. So great edit. Yeah, I look forward to that. Yeah. Nice to see you. Likewise. And, uh, Enjoy hopefully hopefully see you again. your time over yeah. here. Great to meet you. Great to Take care. Cheers. See you around. So about four weeks, maybe five weeks ago now, we were invited onto the Mavericks podcast, and it was one of the best podcasts that I've been on. Like, and you, you know, it's good because. The research they did was was amazing. It was really, really good. And they, they'd gone way back into my backstory and asking all sorts of questions and things that even I'd sort of forgotten about. And um, yeah, we ended up talking solidly for almost two hours and it just, just went through. And I kind of thought, I wonder if this, if this episode will ever see the light of day. We've just bumped in to James there and um, he's just shown me the, the first edit and it looks really, really cool. So excited for that to come out, man. It'll be, It'll be great. Half-scale cars. Dude, my little boy would lose his mind. As was dad. Could you imagine if we had one of these each? I'm assuming electric, are they? Petrol! If I'd have known it was Jaguar Day, this probably would have been the day to bring, to bring it out, right? We should really get our low drag out again, like, soon. You know, because it's been... It's had fuel injection upgrades since we, we've last driven it. Uh, interior updates. I gave the whole team... a probably two pages of A4 feedback off the back of Gumball, because that acted as like this endurance hot weather testing in one week. I was like, oh, if we just change this, the ergonomics of that are a little, you know, and we, we came back with this whole list of like, it wasn't improvements on the car as such, it was more stuff that I would like from a ergonomics and bespoke fit and how I use the car, like putting in a, a USB cable and just things like that. So, but it'd be great to, get it out again because it's it's been a while could have entered it why didn't we think about it? I, to be fair i didn't know i didn't know that there was a jaguar day on the second day the sp3 it's probably the best spec sp3 i've seen i find them quite spec sensitive some of them look okay that one's stunning right i also think they're gonna age really well i mean the aero sculpture on it's pretty wild come and check out the rear of this they're pretty out there it's like they've taken the strakes off the side of a testarossa and curved them around the rear. so that has the 812 comp engine that revs the nine and a half in the back naturally aspirated no hybrid it's very cool it's probably it's probably more pure a car than the laferrari actually because it doesn't have any any hybrid more advanced twin clutch blocks probably less weight it looks pretty cool looks pretty cool yeah. This? What is this oil, oil cooler hanging off the back of the car? When these things used to crash, they would crash so badly. <laughs> that and that is the fuel tank. So you're sat in a bath of fuel. <laughs> it's, it is a bomb, right? I mean, it literally is a bomb. Okay, okay. Which one's yours? Look, I mean, you're, you're, that is a, a sort of bath, petrol bath bomb with a thin skin aluminium sheet between you and fire. Well, that fire, I would imagine, based on the age of this car, that fire extinguisher is a retrofit, because I'm not sure back in the day. How's that for a headrest? So the, the Group 5 
Mark Ones. They'd learnt so much off the uh, development and success of the GT40 that underneath there is a totally revised chassis geometry suspension that actually has literal GT40 components in it. So this is actually quite, quite a special car and they made a handful of these. They didn't make many, and it raced in, I guess, what you could kind of compare it with being a sort of touring car, but really unique. I mean, in the back here, you see in the sh chassis, there's those sort of breather holes. Mark 1s don't, don't have those. It's just a really, uh, really bespoke chassis, but sadly, most of the work that makes this a Group 5 car, you can't and will never see. That's literally welded into the chassis of the car itself, it's like fabricated into it. I mean, even suspension mounts, like hard points of this are different than in a normal Mark One. It does look fast, right? It just looks fast. It's just so light, right? So light, so compact. Like this thing down a, down a British B road. <laughs> so good. If I was taking a car away today, it would either be the F50 or the Carrera GT. And that's no coincidence that they're probably the closest related platforms in terms of that's probably Porsche's equivalent of that manual naturally aspirated okay one's a v12 one's a v10 carbon tub stress member engine it's funny they don't, they don't really have any information on the cars half of the sort of notorious legend around why these things are a bit of a handful was you know tire compounds back in the day just aren't what they are now and if you put a fresh set of Michelin Cup 2s on this, or even a 4S, transformative in terms of the way they handle and feel and basically reinstill a load of confidence back in. It's a big, big st uh, step on. So oftentimes, collector cars versus driver cars still have the same rubber that they left the factory on. So if you're not looking to drive it and you just want a sort of box fresh delivery mileage as it was sealed. So these are uh, the, six, the 16th week of 2020. So that's a 2020 tire, so it's a four-year-old tire, never used. It's not the original tire, but it's a four-year-old tire that hasn't ever actually been used. It's a naturally aspirated V12 manual Ferrari engine with a, I think the engine on this is a stress member of the ch chassis as well. Sonorously makes it quite cool. It's a big car for today. Imagine what it felt like when it launched. Well, in the 90s, right? This was a really big car. This is not far away from a 355 era. So that was the sort of flagship during the 355 era of Ferrari. It's quite a big car, isn't it? It's wide. Check out the back of it, it's huge. Do, do you know, it's funny, I don't know if it actually is that big, but it just has such presence and stance about it. I mean, look, you could see push rod suspension through the rear, it's so cool. Well, when they launched, they're sort of like a little bit controversial. They're like, mm, and, then it, and then it ends up looking like that. Then they date. And yes. Then I think they come back around. They come full circle and they're better than when they launched. Yeah. Yeah, that's like done that. that. Cool now. I think to service these things, you literally split them in half. If you get your, your camera in super close, you can see the composite weave underneath the paint. See it? It's like a sort of like a hetched effect. The story goes that it's so light that they put such a light amount of paint on it. The reality of it is the paint was just a bit they just didn't coat it properly. And so you can see the weave through it. Nothing to do with weight saving. Genuinely, what I was saying was <laughs> I did sell every time it's for the right reason at the right time. Right. And when that went, it was the beginning of like things like this. That's right. So, that's right. you know, one thing leads on to the next and who am I kidding? God damn it. <laughs> <laughs> Four years. It seemed like it was only two or three nah, years. Man. I had it for four years. Yeah. It was, in fact, it was the car that I kept on the channel the longest. Longest, yeah. Yeah. Oh, and we, did, I mean, to be fair, we did everything with it. I mean, there wasn't. You did one gumball as well. Didn't we did a gumball in it. I did yes. a uh, Targa Florio in that. Yeah, yeah. In, in that car, and we did some cool stuff in it. And it's not the kind of car that you can mess with. So you're not going to do the exhaust color change, whatever project yeah, car yeah, stuff yeah. with it. So once once we've done so much with it. It's like, okay, from a content point of view, it's kind of come to the end of its journey. Life cycle. Yeah, yeah. yeah, and then other opportunities were unfolding and we were starting the very, you know, beginning of what became the Koenigsegg journey. And it's just sure. the right thing at, at that time. At but that time. do I want another one? Absolutely. And a Speciale. That for me is kind of when Ferrari well, ended for me. Well, the Speciale. Like TDF, yeah, after yeah. that. I think the Speciale that cool. you had was, was also on the chance. It was, yeah. Yeah, it was. Yeah. And you also did a gumball in that. Yeah, one of your and I gumballs. sent that to Dubai as well. That was that's very right, cool, right, man. Yeah, and it yeah. was great, right? So, um, yeah, this for me was peak Ferrari. The 812 was nice. 
the 812 comp phenomenal engine and drivetrain a little bit mansory like a little bit sort of aftermarket too, 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 too much carbon just, too much carbon, too much right? i don't know it's just yeah, too yeah. much just lost a bit of the sophistication that this car had right yeah um and then speciali for me was peak mid-engine v8 that was that was it, that was it. you know so one day yeah. sell a few more koenig eggs and get into a ferrari there's an irony in there somewhere isn't there <laughs> <laughs> so we brought down not one but two but three Koenigsegg. Three Koenigseggs. And this is our uh, second year here, or yep. our second time here. Second time, yeah. uh, Within the space of 12 months. Yeah. Um, and uh, little did we expect that we'd be here this time with a Jesco. So that's, no, that's, 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 that's cool. decent progress. How many people have asked you if they can buy a Jesco? Oh, I've lost count. <laughs> I wish we had I, more. I wish we had I some wish, left I to wish sell. we had some left to sell. When people see them in reality and they're able to sit in them yeah. and they're like can you get me one of these because yeah. it, it's so real when you're when you're in it and they look like on paper they're just unicorns and then someone sits in one and they're, and they're, and they're like okay yeah. this is a real car but you think uh, about it's pretty special. us being here last year yeah without this car and the attention that we were getting yeah even off the back just of the off the back of those Rogeras, and then yeah. the the conversations that they've stimulated over the last 12 yeah. months to get us to the point where we've got to now yeah. is just quite incredible. So to have one sat here on the lawn. It's pretty for amazing, to isn't see. it? Two sides of the coin on these cars because the reason people want them is because they can't get them. And when Koenigsegg say, we're going to make 125 of these, we're going to make 125 yeah. of them. <clears throat> end, end of story. And it, it's really funny when you say, you know, we've had multiple people over the last three days genuinely say, look, I will buy a. Yeah. Jesco, and we're genuinely saying, look, you can't have you it. can't have one. I mean, I mean, and it's it's a bittersweet thing, isn't it? Because we love to sell more, but the reason that we're having that chat is, is because you can't get one. Well, so we, it's a it's a really strange strange place to be. All the things that have strong. happened in the last year, we've had a, a, a whole year's worth of events. That's we've true. we've yeah. had the opening of the dealership, which has been a huge thing. Yeah, and yeah, we the, didn't actually have a dealership <laughs> this time last year, and, which is uh, kind of nice. How many times has Tom had to run around and stick on the roof? Uh, the, the, well, this place turns out it has its own microclimate and not in a good way. It'll be like this now. <laughs> yeah, give it 15 minutes, it'll be pouring down. And then Tom, bless him, must have run along and put three roofs on three cars very fast. What was the, the stats here that it's the most expensive patch? Most expensive patch of undeveloped real estate. Yeah, outside of Singapore or something like something that. Something like that. In the world, yeah. effectively. Yeah. Well, we're in the, the heart of the city of London on a cricket pitch. Can you imagine what you could develop here? Yeah. Oh, wild, mate. Yeah. yeah. We also heard that that building there, Yorkie was sharing with us, he spoke to someone, and they had to pay a shadow tax because that That's building That's... causes a shadow on this grass, which is obviously highly cultivated, yep. sp specific grass, ancient grass and uh, they paid one and a half million sh shadow tax just to put the building up because it casts a shadow. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so it's kind of a strange space, but it's amazing. And when you're out on the main street, you have no idea no. that it's here. Even the entrance, the entrance to this it's is like a little, little gate. tiny yeah. gate. I'm, I'm about to go now and it's been successful because we've had no cars broken into, no, no <laughs> shit stolen. <laughs> it's just... Brilliant. Can't use any of that. That's great. I love it. <laughs> I love it. Bleep it and beam it out in the uncut. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> the best driving experience I've, I've ever had. There's one car we drove last week that I can't tell you about, which was probably the most profound driving experience, but that'll come out in, in a few weeks' time. But probably driving Kimmy's Formula One car. That was probably probably the best driving experience I've had. And I wish I, I did it later than I did, because when, when they put me in the car, like I hadn't raced much and I didn't have much experience and I, th I think I'd be able to get so much more out of it now. Not that I'd be able to get anywhere near what it's designed for out of it, but even still, like I remember after five laps, like my neck gave up, you know, and, and it was just, it was so incredible to experience the performance of a, of a full-blown Formula One car. But what was special about it was driving a Formula One car, yes, but it was, it was an actual works Formula One car supported by Formula, um, um, Renault's Formula One team. And, and so it was the whole experience and it was a three month program to get me in the car. It wasn't like, hey, turn up and drive. I think that was probably the most, the most privileged drive I'll ever have and the most special drive I think I'll ever have. A good friend of mine bought Rowan Atkinson's McLaren F1 and we did 3,000 miles, the road trip. We did 3,000 miles in 10 days in that car. So that was really special as well. 
but um, yeah, that, the one I can't tell you about, and the F1 was probably, that was Faisal's car. Yeah, 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 exactly. So that was, that was, that was pretty heavy. That was right, it was like a flat maroon yes. color. And it was the exact Atkinson car, and it had been rebuilt a few times. And uh, I remember driving it for the first time. And of course, you've got the central yeah. driving position. And I think out of everything that, that struck me at first was how light the car felt, mm -hmm. but the actuation of the gearbox was yeah. like a Swiss watch meets a rifle bolt. Wow. It was like incredible precision, but, but almost like amazing dexterity at the same time. It was like light heavy. It was very, it was phenomenal. The hype phenomenal. was real basically. The hype, the hype was real on the transmission and, yeah. and the engine. I don't think the hype was real on the dynamics and handling because it was very much the road car. I think people expect a McLaren F1 to be what the F1 LM or GTR is. And it really isn't. It's more of like, it's almost like a hyper Grand Tour. It's like a very lightweight manual, like sporty GT almost. And you know, back then you were like 30 year old sort of, tires right yeah. so you've got very big tall yeah. sidewalls and when you go around a corner it's it's not like today we take for granted that you can go around a 90 degree switchback on an alpine pass mm -hmm. by crossing your arms can't do that in an f1 yeah. it's like a handfuls of it rounds wind off the lock the performance in a straight line was incredible but driving dynamics wise i don't think it's what people expect it's very good but perhaps not what you might imagine an f1 to be it's probably what you imagine an f1 lm, LM. To be, yeah, which is which is cool.